The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 13th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, go ahead and send me an email. Send that off early and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any, in every ping, will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, most of the U.S. indices, well, all except for one, is trading to the upside. The one that's not is the Dow transports are off 21 points. Otherwise, you have the Dow up 67 points, two tenths of a percent, a half a percent for the S&P or 25 points, a little over 1% for the NASDAQ, 167 points, six tenths for the Russell. That's 12 points. The semis are up 44. That's a little over 1% as well. Gold's up two bucks. Silver's up 58 cents. Light sweet crude up 68 pennies. 30 year treasuries up 11 ticks, printed out at 126.04. Natural gas is off at nickel. She's printed at 257. So let's begin. Let's begin like we uh, typically do and take a look at where are we at from a market best standpoint. Let's start with a 30 minute time frame. 30 minute time frame for the S&P 500 is, going to, is what's going to pop up right now. You've got 128 above, 140 below. So just went to a slightly negative uh, outlook for the 30 minute time frame for the ES Mini. So we'll make sure we pay attention to that 30 minute time frame chart. In the case of the NQ, you know, as we review, in the case of the NQ, uh, you are 35 above and 18 below. Let me just hit that S&P one more time. So 35. So now you've got choppy markets. You are bullish on the 30 minute for the NQ. You are potentially, let's make sure this was uh, updated properly. Yeah, you are slightly uh, bearish on the ES Mini. That's for the 30 minute time frame. We also have four other time frames, the uh, 60, 240 daily and weekly. So let's take a look at those. I believe we'll be see bullish on all of these. This is for the S&P. The speed dials are all set. You're looking at the upper right hand corner. They're all set to um, uh, for bullish. And the same thing with regard to the NASDAQ. So the only issue is really the 30 minute time frame chart for the uh, NQ. So let's do this. I hadn't planned on this, but since that's what popped up, let me uh, pull up all the 30 minute charts out here. So 30 minute equity futures. Here we go. And now we're going to switch panels. We get over to the uh, white background chart. So look, look white here momentarily. There we go. We got this. Okay. So let's let these populate. So we know that we are market breadth bullish in the NQ, market breadth negative in the ES mini. In the ES mini, I'll just simply first start there. We'll expand out the chart. So in the ES mini, with regard to a topping pattern out here, what do we have? Give me a second. Let me pull this back. Let me take a quick peek here. So that was a recycled so what we actually have is we've got a roads momentum indicator top so you have this little uh, bear sash candle bearish engulfing candle it formed right here at 10 30. Um, but what price is doing right now so here's how that pattern gets negated so this is cool to try to understand right where we've got negative market breadth negative market breadth says the sellers ought to be able to push this down to support which by the way is down at 45 20. 
if, however, buyers are able to overcome the uh, sellers and close about 45, 32, 25, the rally should continue. So jot that number down, 45, 32, 25 for the ES Mini. It's not trading above it, it's closing above it on a 30 minute basis. So right now, signals would point to that fact that the ES Mini on a 30 minute basis should be able to make its way back to 45, 20 and find support in that area. That's the 30 minute chart for the ES Mini. The NQ, if we take a look at it, which we are, do we have a topping pattern? The answer is we do. We also have a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top out here. So this is also right now consolidating with inside its profile. So the level to be watching for inside the NQ, a 30 minute close above 15, 621.50, will negate that topping pattern and tell you about a further rally. Support here, which really was already tested. Um, it is a bullish structured 30 minute profile. And so the support zone is between 15,546 and 15,565. That level has been tested and rejected twice now. We may be getting back down there, but the ultimate level of support would be 15,546. So that's what's going on there. Now, we are market breadth bullish here. So the NQ should be able to take out that high, right? We looked at market breadth, both for the 30-minute chart for the NQ, the NASDAQ 100, and for the ES Mini. We had ES Mini was negative. That says price should be able to push its way down to the bottom of the profile. And the NQ is saying just the opposite. It says I should be able to take out the highs out there. Uh, so we'll see which one wins. Whichever one wins, that will tell you something out here. I got close below, by the way, 15,546 in the NQ would signal move back to 15,498. The Russell and the Dow have been on fire, so to speak. Well, in the case of the uh, Dow, all I've got is sideways action out here. So I don't have any kind of a top, not at least that I see right now. Uh, uh, what we do see, nothing more than consolidating sideways, which has been going on since about 1230 uh, yesterday uh, after uh, noon. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, that thing has been on fire. And that thing, when I say it's been on fire, it does not have a topping signal yet. I do say wave number seven pattern that was recycled. So it's got a potential of a topping signal. But at this stage right here, the ultimate support you can see was already tested intraday today. And that was its TD9 count breakout level. That was at 1948.30. So the area to watch inside the Russell 2000 today to the downside is going to be 1948.30. The upside, I don't really have a, a top in place that I'd be willing to uh, give you the number of um, that would suggest a further rally. However, we take a look at what's going on in the daily time frame. Let's switch over and take a look at the daily charts out here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. This is what I want to do. Let's close this out. So I free up a little bit of resources out here. And let's look at the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, what we're going to take a look at is the A to B equals CD to the upside that formed inside of the uh, Russell 2000. So you can see that yesterday, price took out the TD9 count top. It took out a sell the D point pattern. What that did then did was triggered an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, the approximate price projection for that is going to get you to about the 2030 area. Don't quote me right to the T, but that's the uh, pattern that is in play as we speak right now. Price is above profiles. In the case of the ES and the NQ on the daily time frame, you see those roads momentum indicator signals that are triggered. Those need bearish reversal candles. In the case of the Dow, you actually have to go back to 2022 for its top out here. So it still has a top that's in place. The ES does not. The NQ does not. And the Russell 2000. Uh, well, on the Russell 2000, it actually does have a top that is in place out there. Uh, but right now, what you've got going on here is an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, I don't know if... Um, if the IWM passed that B point with volume or not. Uh, but we'll check that out during this breakout here, and I'll report back to you as soon as we get back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 61, S&P 23, NASDAQ 153, and the Russell's up 10. We were taking a look at the uh, Russell. Uh, I do have the IWM charts up on our screen. We took a look at the Russell 2000 equity future contract. We identified the A to B equals CD pattern. Here is the A to B equals CD pattern for the Russell. Now, the swing point that uh, was passed, the B point of the A to B equals CD, was from June 14th. The volume here was 37.1 million shares, and that was passed with volume yesterday. Yesterday's volume, 40.1 million shares. So what you have in the IWM is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, a price projection level of 200.51. Now, before price is going to be able to make that move out here, it's got to deal with resistance, and resistance is on the daily, I'm sorry, is on the weekly and the monthly time frame. Both. So the weekly time frame resistance, the top of its weekly profile, 193.48. We're printing at 192 and change out here. The top of the monthly profile, 192.90. So no doubt, we can understand why price is stalled here because those sellers are located right there in the weekly and that monthly time frame. The question is, can all those buyers from yesterday, that 40 million, overcome those areas, overcome those sellers? Well, we should know by tomorrow. If price is able to close above 193.48, that would be a signal, not a guarantee, but a really good signal that, in fact, this A to B equals C that formed yesterday is going to come to fruition with an initial price target of 200.51. I say initial because the retracement here of that B to C leg was only 44%, and that is a strong that is a strong retracement from the standpoint of what it does to that C to D leg out there. So really, the message from yesterday from the IWM is that it wants to go target 20608 out there. But what you and I know is sellers are sellers. We can see them on the weekly and we can see them on the monthly time frame. And not until we get a close above 193.48, will yesterday's message really take hold. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, the Russell 2000 and just simply the markets overall. But now it's time to start taking a look at some of the questions that have come in. We're going to start with yesterday. We had two questions that came in towards the end of the show. Oh, by the way, 
Um, let me switch over. Uh, with regard to, we did have uh, Garo call in yesterday. We were looking at the parabolic SAR. We had an issue with regard to my system on the black background charts, the signal system out there. Um, I was able to confirm that. Uh, well, so here's the thing. They're they're investigating it. It was not consistent on their system, Garo. So when I compared charts on my white background system, which are up on the screen right now, they're not up on the screen right now, and the black background uh, charts out there, um, uh, they were. Uh, it was only. It was not. It was not only. I, I, I. What I did was I looked at different time frames and different instruments, and there was no consistency. So, for example, Apple, Microsoft, Google, no problem. Everything matched right to the T out there. So they're investigating that, but I couldn't get the. Uh, I couldn't get that, uh, that that to work for the instrument you and I were taking a look at. Which, right now, off the top of my head, I'm uh, kind of. Uh, uh, drawing a blank on. Okay, so now we also had a couple of uh, instruments that were requested yesterday. Hershey's HSY is one of them. And so let's take a look at that. HSY, this is uh, from uh, um, JDA, I think, maybe, uh, who uh, wanted to take a look at this. Uh, I know you sent an email back yesterday, and I... I, I I, 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 and with your name. So here we'll take a look at Hershey. Here's what here's the first thing. And the question was, it was moving lower. This was from from uh, yesterday. Was it a buy with it moving lower? And I did respond back by email. And I said, look, a TD nine count bottom was going to complete yesterday. And you can see that was a bar following bar number nine out there. But what I also indicated was that on the charts, if you look at the daily time frame, there is an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's completed right about now, or at least the one-to-one -one price projection, which was 238.02, and that was hit yesterday. That's about where we're trading right now. So you have a, an A to B equals CD pattern. When you have two patterns, does that make it stronger? Well, first, this pattern has not confirmed itself. They buy the D point. The TD9 count has. But all patterns can uh, fail. So in this case here, my suggestion, when I take a look at the weekly chart, that looks like it wants to go target 236.59. It doesn't have to, but that's its breakout level. That also has an A to B equals CD pattern. So that also requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. And the monthly is trading below the center of its uh, profile. And so it could be targeting 218.03. Okay, so we know that's the setup here. Where's the buy? Is there a buy? I would say there's a buy if you get a bullish reversal candle and you don't negate that TD9 count bottom. What happens if you negate the TD9 count bottom today? Well, that pattern you could throw out the door. You don't have to worry about that. And then you're just waiting for a bullish reversal candle. So if you get that, then I would say, okay, you might want to go ahead and, and, and take a ride on the reading. That's not today's action. If we take a look at today's action as an example, so you have the TD9 count. Remember, if you're going to get a market turn, you're going to see them turning. You're going to see resistance levels fail on the shorter term intraday chart. So here's a 30 minute chart. That's just kind of the standard default time frame when I pull up and, and analyze uh, an instrument for you. Daily, weekly, monthly, and I just look at the 30. If we're gonna get more detailed, we'd be looking at uh, at uh, some additional intraday time frames, a 65, 130, 195, and a 15 minute. Um, but here in the case of Hershey, you can see that this also, as price was hitting that, su not support, as price was making that TD9 count bottom yesterday, the 30 minute chart generated a TD9 count and Rhodesman indicator bottom and wave number seven bottom. Now, three bottoms don't make it stronger, but it did have three bottoms there. And what did price do? Price rallied right up into resistance. This is telling us that right now it is not ready for prime time. Now, if price did close the day above 241, that's a TD9 count breakdown level, then we might have a different view, but that's not the view that we have right now. And so I would be waiting with regard to Hershey's to the extent that you want to take a long position there. I'd be waiting for either a daily or a weekly bullish reversal candle because if you're in a long-term trade which i believe you were looking at this from the long term then you want a long-term signal out there so i hope that helps you out with regard to hershey and thanks so much for waiting an extra day the next request was to take a look at this is also from yesterday this is from a rock star or superstar or, uh, some kind of star out there and that's a was to take a look at roku and the question was, is it breaking out? And I responded back yesterday. I said, well, we'll know by the end of the day. And the reason was because price was attempting to take out the B point of an A to B equals CD. And what I didn't know is whether or not it would have the volume. Well, the volume on that B point is 7.8 million shares. And yesterday's volume was 11.7. .7. So now what we know about Roku is we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, somebody said, is it breaking out? I assume that that's what you were referring to. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection is 84.38.
the retracement on this, this B to C retracement, was a 61.8 percent, uh, 61, uh, 0.618 retracement. It was really 62.53. I'm getting that figure off of another screen that I'm looking at out there. The price does look strong. It's on the left hand side of the uh, A to B of the C to D leg out there. Now, you've got this A to B equals C D to the upside. That's been confirmed by volume. We took a look at something similar with regard to the IWM. Turns out, as we take a look at, so when, when, you, when you see that, and here we get to look at a longer term, uh, an intermediate term chart, and what we see is 74.98 is a very key resistance level. So you need to see, or you'd like to see a close above 74.98 tomorrow. If you don't, it just means the pattern of the A to B equals CD, just like in the IWM, is a little bit suspect out there. So it's 74.98 that you want to be watching star and if you get a close above that come tomorrow uh, odds favor a move up to 8438 that's the one to one a to b equals cd for roku out there we get back to this break we're going to take a look at amazon for david h zdx for nicholas i n m d for dennis and mj for dennis we'll be right back report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from David H. in Panama City. David, thanks for... Uh 
for uh oh wait 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 there might be might have a caller we do have a caller so uh we've got um fosh is it fosh from riverview hello fish 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 oh sorry about that it was just uh, spelled yeah incorrectly. i'm trying to get a hold of uh stevie wonder you got it. You got it. That's All me. Right, but, That's hey, me. I wanted to ask you about um, stop methodology, okay. stop losses. Sure. sure. Um, and my question is, when you, how, how do you handle stops? Like, let me give you an example. Suppose I get, I'm in a position and I get up, you know, a little over 1%. Do you set your stop, trailing stop at 1% or do you stop it at break even? Or how do you, how do you manage um, – stops in those types of situations so you're not talking about let's say the initial stop when you would enter the trade you're right. talking about how would yeah. you manage uh, how would you manage stops yeah. as it starts moving when in I, your direction i i kind of i kind of have it with the initial stop yeah but okay. then managing um i guess i'm talking about managing profits so that they don't come losses or that you give it enough time to run um is there a specific instrument right now that you're you, looking at i know at? you are big on uh you know that kind of thing and and knowledgeable about that and just wanted to see what your thoughts are sure so at first is there an instrument specifically that you're taking a look at so we can well a lot of the discuss. times it's things like you know the spxs say okay so in, um, in that case the triples yeah yeah so, so if you're doing the triples, let's just say it's the S, it's the SPXS. What I would do is I would be looking at. Now I'm gonna. Are you able to watch this on Tiger TV? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna. I've got my black background screens up on my uh, chart right now. If I put in the right symbol, that'll help us. So with regard to trading the triples, first your stops and everything should be based upon what's going on on the individual, the one, the one time, the spy. So if you're trading yeah. a two or a three, I really would prefer that you look at uh, stop adjustments based on what's going on the spy versus the triple out there. But you do what okay. you do what you think is is correct. So. As an example, um, and, and I'm just going to talk about maybe the version of a, a version of the trailing stop that you're that you're looking at. Once price gets, let's say, beyond, starts to get to towards your price objective, um, uh, and your price objective might be just a, a two or three um, times your risk uh, that you put in there. Then I start taking a look at uh, at adjusting stops. Um, or I always ask the question, is there any reason to um, make, uh, is there any reason, is anything changed in the reason I entered the position? So in the case of the spies, if there's no reason uh, to change there, then if you're just trying to create a insurance stop, is what I'll call it right now, mm -hmm. what I would do is I would take the spies, trading at 447 and change, what's called 448 right now. And the average true range on the spies is $3.79. Now, when I say average true range, I'm looking at a 10-day period, Fish. And so for 10 days, we know that the average price movement is $3.79. I would have my stop, as long as you want to stay in this position, and you're just trying to protect yourself from anything that might happen, you know, that uh, strangely, uh, that goes against that position, I would then multiply that 3.79 times either 1.272 or 1.618. I prefer to fall back to 1.618, especially in volatile markets, because you could just be getting an intraday swing. The reason why you multiply at times uh, some some number, something other than the average true range, is because you don't want to be knocked out of the position because of average movement up or down. Does that make sense, what I just said? That part of it? Yes. Okay, so that's yep. why you take a look at that average true range. Uh, if you use charting software, they all have them out there. I use a 10-day. You use whatever's going to make sense uh, for you. But you want to you want to understand what that average range of that instrument is that you're trading. The reason to set it at 1.618 is because if that stop gets hit, chances are there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the reason that you entered that trade, or or what have you. So that's that's one way to take a look at it. Um, with regard to the spies themselves, so do, first, does that answer your question as to what I would do? Yes, I think so. And maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but a lot of times what I'll do is, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get out of it by the end of the day. So 
a lot of times, as soon as I get a little bit over 1%, I'll just set a trailing stop at 1%. And you should so use what works for you. too high. Well, when you've been doing that, what, so what's, what, what has been the result? In other words, so you've done that. Um, uh, would you say you're getting stopped out of the position more times than not, than you don't want to be? Or, yeah. So what is it that is that? Okay. So, so then it's worthwhile for you to take a look at other ways or other methodologies for it. So it's kind of like when you got into the trade, did, was there a price objective? And maybe not in this specific no, trade, but no, not really. It was more. It's more of a, you know. And I end up, you know, I'm not real successful at things, but um, you know, if I can get up a few percent, you know, say I'm get, say I'm up, you know, three so percent, then I'll set yeah. the stop. Then I'll set the the trailing stop at like one yeah. percent, or if I get up five or six percent, I'll set it at four to make sure I don't lose money, but I can try to stay in it. So I was just trying to, I'm trying to develop a well, let's say, that, that's yeah, effective. If you take, sure. So if you look at your 1% strategy and you applied it against the SPY, which is trading at 448, 1%, if I'm not mistaken, would be what, $4.40. The average mm -hmm. range is three dollars and seventy nine cents on the spy. I don't know what three seventy nine times one point six one eight is, but that would be. It's going to be higher than that. Uh, so uh, that's going to be about six bucks under six bucks. So here, this would be saying, you know, you're so you're not that far off if you, at least in this instance here, if you took a look at the average true range, and in, in that case, you probably get towards your level by multiplying times one point two seven two. SPXS or you? Which 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 one was it? The SPX. SPXS S. S. is okay. one I use a lot. Yeah, and so the average range on that, geez, it's only 38 cents. Well, that's uh, SPXS is the short position. Um, so is, yes. is it short? Okay. So um, see, here's the... Uh, on this, this is an example. Yeah. yeah. I may use the, uh, the TQ, TQQQ, um, but those are the ones I typically use. See, if you use, if you use 1%, on SPXS. Now you're down to what 13 cents as a stop mm -hmm. and the average the average true range on SPXS is 38 cents. So in that case there you can see where 1% is not doing you justice. Because yep. this instrument on an average daily basis moves 38 cents from high to low. Mm -hmm. And if if your stop is only if you're going to do a 1% stop on this and it's going to be uh, 13 cents, I would say in that case, then just take your profit. D don't even mess okay. with it. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. another thing, another thing that you can be taking a look at, certainly intraday or, or, or whatever, whatever, it doesn't really matter what time frame, you know, is the is the instrument that you're trading, you're taking a look at, is it continuing to make higher lows intraday wise? In that case, here I'd okay. be looking at the ES Mini or so. So I hope that helped you out, Fish, with regard to that. And uh, thanks so much for the call. I hear we're going All to right, a buddy. break. Appreciate you bet. it. You bet. I was you the have guy a terrific who Thursday. To climb Mount Sinai. Ah, there you go. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Steve. Bye bye. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the chart for Amazon on our screen. This is for uh, David H. in uh, Panama City. And uh, David, as you may recall, if you were listening on Monday, he had written in, we were taking a look at the stock chart here for Amazon. And on Monday, uh, this is this candle right here, this little red candle, uh, July 10. Price was trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. And so, uh, and he's even got here in his note, I said that you require, I, it required two closes below that to suggest a change in trend. And that's the bottom of its bullish structured profile out there. And this really should help fish as well. It's maybe not a tool fish that you have on your system, but understanding where these profile levels are at really help you with regard to getting into a trade or getting out of a trade out here with regard to resistance or support failing. Well, in this case here, you can see that the very following session, price uh, got back inside the profile. So we'll call that a... Uh, you know, that's why we wait for two bars. That's why we wait for confirmation, really, because those one hit wonders that you see really all the time. And then uh, what Price uh, did yesterday was it closed above the center of its bullish structure profile. And that indicated it should at least target 13185. Well, it's done more than that. It gapped to the upside. It's trading at 13330 right now. It's above its green oscillator and change line. It remains bullish. Now, you've got the calls for next Friday. So what do you do? Um, well, at this stage here, the message that you had is bullish. The message on Monday we were taking a look at it was cautiously bullish, cautiously because price was trading below the bottom of that bullish structure profile, but buyers came to the rescue. Now, when we look at the weekly time frame chart, you can see that this is going to become bar number nine come tomorrow of a TD9 count. The last time that Amazon formed a TD9 count on the weekly time frame was back in May 19th. And that lasted for just maybe a few moments because the very next uh, bar on a weekly basis closed above that, told us, told us about a strong momentum to move to the upside. Now, just because the last one failed doesn't mean this one will fail. However, what we need to see here is next week's action because the top in Amazon can take place on a bar following bar number nine. So right now, what this is signaling to you and I, at least as of 11.44 in the morning, is that Amazon wants to move higher out here. It is up at resistance on the uh, week monthly time frame, and that's at the top of its profile, which is 133.54. So ideally, you'd love to see price trade above that. So 
What else is going on to Amazon? Well, if we take a look at its 26-year history, its seasonal cycle pattern, what we see is Amazon typically forms a top right around now, July 15th to uh, July 20th out there. So, you know, what I don't see on a short-term basis, uh, so it's getting ready. It appears that it's getting ready to top. That's what the weekly chart is most certainly telling us. The daily chart needs a new pattern, uh, which would really just be a bearish reversal candle to confirm that. So, um, you know, do we have any signal? to suggest that you jettison that position now we don't but you are up at resistance on that uh, weekly and um, that's about uh, all that I have for you so I hope that that helped you out uh, David and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write back in Nicholas wanted to take a look at the GDX so let's go figure out what uh, Nicholas's question is let's get over to those stock charts and the question reads like this Morning, Steve. Great call on the GDX Nugget. Uh, you're welcome. Would you please go over resistance levels above 39 for Nugget? Um, okay, so for Nugget. Uh, so uh, I will do that, absolutely. But but we're in this trade here, as you know. So the first thing, and this is I had mentioned to Fish. He was trading the triples, and the Nugget is a 2X out here. You still want to understand what the resistance levels are on the 1X. So in this case here, the GDX. And really, the resistance levels... Uh, the only resistance level, there's none on the daily. The next resistance level on the daily is at 35. And you've got the Nugget, July 33 and 35 calls. You saw you sold them yesterday. Okay, got nice profit. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so resistance here, um, on a daily time frame, we resist up at 35, 35. There's an A to B equals CD pattern inside the GDX. So if a bearish reversal candle were to form, that would generate a Gartley sell pattern. Uh, the resistance levels inside of GDX are where it's trading into right now on a weekly time frame. The bottom of its profile is 32.30. The actual high so far that we've seen this week is 32.26. So if price can close above 32. But I say 32.30 out there, then it may be saying that to you and I, it wants to go target 33.25. So I like those 33 numbers. Why the 33 number? And we're still on the GDX here, not the nugget. The reason is because if you take a look at the weekly GDX chart, you see that price was below the bottom of that bullish structured weekly profile for really about two months. Counter trend moves, if this is only a counter trend move, will find resistance at 33.25. So that is the really key resistance. But you've got one here, a junior one, if we'll call it, the bottom of that uh, weekly profile. Again, that's at 32.30. Those are the only resistance levels that I see on the GDX. Now, let's pull up the nugget, NUGT. Let's go see what numbers it provides to us. But again, all of your trading action should be based upon the 1X, not the 2X or 3X out here. With regard to the nugget, its resistance level was 39.05. And that's a price point right now that price is trading above. So old resistance could become new support. This is only day one above that. Um, but again, you'd really be relying on the GDX, not on NUGT. But that you asked for resistance level, I want to give that to you. That's old support. The next resistance level on a daily basis of the upside would be at 49.30. Now, on a weekly time frame here, in the case of Nugget, it's in a bullish structured weekly profile. And a close above 37.98 this week is going to suggest a run up to 49.54 or 5049 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at both of those instruments. Now, what we should expect out here, I don't want anybody rushing out to uh, uh, add to or to uh, enter a long position inside of Nugget or GDX right now. And the reason that I don't, not that I know what's going to take place tomorrow or the next day, I don't. But what we do know is today looks like it will be day number five of consecutive moves higher inside of the GDX. Last time we had a five-day move it was way back here in March of 2023. That led to a, a four-consecutive-day move lower, and then it was off to the upside out there. The other five-day move that we had out here was back on January 25th. That led to quite a move to the downside. I don't expect that that's what we're going to see right now. Of course, I can't control that. So we're in day five here. Odds favor that what we see, it's not a guarantee, but odds favor that we start to see some type of retracement inside of the uh, GDX, inside of the mining sector that begins begins tomorrow, 
Maybe it doesn't begin till Monday, but we should get a one or at least two day pullback, which would really be ideal out there. And that would set your next potential buying opportunity. So, Nicholas, uh, since you're out of that position, congrats on the profit. It looks like we're about to get to a short term top out there. Wait for at least a one day pullback, maybe a two day pullback, which would be the ideal time to reenter into your position out there. Let's go to the next question that come in that has come in. This is from inside the Tiger's Den. And this is from uh, Dennis. It's actually the only question that I think I have inside the Tiger's Den. And Dennis wanted to take a look at IN. IN is Nancy. M is in Mary. D is in David. So now we've got on our stock charts here INMD. And I think it was just uh, you wanted a, a long term view, if I'm not mistaken. INMD. So from a long term standpoint, really we'd be looking at the uh, weekly chart. But I can't just start there right now, Dennis. And the reason is because the daily chart shows that yesterday was a confirmed TD9 count top. It was a bar following bar number nine. Now you can see the A to B equals CD pattern out there. That would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. As long as price does not close above 45.52, then INMD should pull back and it should pull back to its oscillator and change line, currently printing out at 40.38 out there. We come back to this break. We'll continue to take a look at INMD. Give Dennis West Palm Beach the parameters. One of those is going to be 46.96. And if price closes above, says this thing heads much higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol INMB. That's in mode uh, limited out here. We know it's got a TD9 count top that formed yesterday. Price should pull back to the 4038 level. Longer term, it's got an A to B equals CD. Now, it is passing the B point from back the week of February 17th. There was 18 million shares that uh, passed hands there. Uh, this week, right now, you're at 11 million shares. So uh, on a daily basis, um, you know, yesterday was a big volume day for it, and it did about six million shares. On, on average, it does about two. So it's gonna, it's gonna take out that B point. It looks like it will, but it's doing it with lighter volume. Nonetheless, you've got a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside of about forty nine hundred out there. So that's longer term. But forty six ninety six was the number that I gave to you before we went to the break. That's the top of that monthly profile. And if price can close above that, Dennis, then you could be on your way all the way back up to its all time high, back to the ninety nine. 27 level. So hope that helped you out. You also had a second request. That was to take a look at MJ, which is the uh, pot uh, ETF out here. Longer term, Dennis, there's really one number you have to focus on. And I just have to give you one number. It's three. It's three dollars and 33 cents. Just focus on the threes. If MJ on a weekly basis is able to close up doesn't have to be this week but if nj is able to close above three dollars and 33 cents that's going to signal to you and i that there may be a change in trend the daily time frame you can see has wave number seven that's courtesy of a portion of the uh, chapman wave out there it's also got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out here and you're above profile so that's good but the real key level of resistance is 333 what's the actual high this week so far 332 333 is the number. Again, more than two consecutive bars below a bullish structure profile. Your price can, and that's where counter trend rallies would end. Right now, that's what we have to say that inside of MJ, the only thing that we've got right now is a counter trend move. But you close above 333, Dennis, and you're looking for the longer term or the intermediate term. Well, you should at least get 361, but it also tells us that this may be more than just a counter trend trend move folks thanks so much for joining me here on terrific thursday please stay tuned for great programming i'll be back with you on fantastic friday again thanks for joining us have a wonderful day and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon take care now